So for the parents out there, how do you have those conversations? How do you talk safety without running the risk of sounding patronising? Let's bring in parenting coach Sue Atkins on this. She's lovely. Sue, good morning. Good morning. Well, firstly, what did you make of uh, Sarah, the way she put it across? I thought she was really, really, really powerful, yeah? I thought it was very, very powerful and kind of scary, isn't it, that that can happen to you? And she was sort of matter of fact about it. I mean, the idea of my kids, you know, my daughter going out and my son and being spiked with their drink like that, thank goodness she had people around her. So for me, it's always about talking and teaching our kids, but not sort of, you know, lecturing. That just switches them off. So pick your moment, like I used to do with my kids, often when we were driving, actually, because I'm not then looking at them directly in the Mm. eye and passing on all of that i often found driving means you have these sort of good conversations sometimes and then you can point these things out to them to think about because you know what kids are like they don't see the risks half the time but safer together is the key they have to stay in a group in a crowd for the whole of the night and make sure nobody is left on their own stranded Absolutely. And, you know, I know my daughter sometimes didn't always tell me the stories. I know at the time, but, you know, when we'd be chatting, she'd sometimes say, you know, what was happening when they were out and about and how they do look out for each other. But they'd had that conversation, her group of girls in particular, about making sure if someone is, you know, had too much to drink, not particularly been spiked, but, you know, had a few too many and Mm. sort of lost their way, that they did make sure they got home safely. They didn't just put them in an Uber or something and leave them to it. They went with them so it is very important isn't it to talk and teach your kids about this aspect of things i think so when we've picked our moment what do we actually say to them well think about what you want to say um you know it's not for me to tell you what to say it's about thinking about you know the maturity of your kids and their ability to kind of take on board messages it's how you say it your tone of voice your body language your intention And just sort of talk, you know, I used to use all sorts of things. If I saw an article in a paper or something, I'd talk and say, oh, I saw this in the paper the other day. What do you make of that? Ah. And then we'd chat about it. And then I'd pass on what I would hope, you know, guides and ways to do it. It's better not to sledgehammer them. Try and guide them and try and talk and teach them without sort of lecturing. That's when they switch off and don't pay attention to what you're saying. It's a horrible feeling for parents, isn't it? When you wake up in the middle of the night and you think, are they back? And you think, oh no, they're not not back. (laughs) I've been there, done that. And another time, and she won't thank me, I don't hope she's not listening, but she'd been out and I did say uh, that was quite a short skirt you were wearing and she'd had a few drinks, came in and her phone was out of charge and she hadn't got any money because she, you know, whatever. So we had, and it wasn't any point in me talking to her at half two in the morning, although I was just relieved she was home, but also furious about some of these things. So in the morning... You know, um, I chose my moment and made the tea and had a chat and said, you know, certainly if nothing else, uh, this is, I think, just before Uber. But now there's Uber, so you've at least got them safely home. But, you know, to have the tenor in the handbag all the time so you can Mm. get home and to make sure your phone is charged. So important to kids who are connected 24-7, but go out and forget And Sarah is leading the way from the other side of the bar, if I can put it that way. She has got her staff trained to know exactly what to do if somebody comes up and says, I feel uncomfortable in any way. They have free spike testing kits if they leave the drink and then they're a little bit uncomfortable about that. They've got free phone chargers on hand, so you always have a charge. It's 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 a good start, this, isn't it? Yes, she's really thinking about it as a mum, as well as, you're not trying to quash the fun aspect, going out having a great old time, no, it's the safety angle, and I actually commend what she's doing, I think those very practical small things can make a big difference. Sue, it's always great speaking to you, thank you for your expertise as always. Take care, stay safe. Yeah, I will, I won't be left alone either, and it really is the last thing you need when you're a teenager is left alone wandering around a town. Nobody wants that, do they?